All right. I guess I should stand in place so they get the cameras pointed right. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> exactly. I've got some more swag and the usual trivia questions. These are at least good 10 o'clock ones because they're easy. Or they say what that means. <laughs> this one is, what fictional country is Dr. Doom king of? And this is for, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Video live. We had to start with a musical interlude. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here so early. Hopefully, uh, most of you guys are actually awake. I'm Taylor Banks. And I'm Adam Bergenzer. And we are members of Chaos Theory. We are here to talk to you this morning about becoming Jack Flack, uh, essentially real life cloak and dagger. Uh, before we get too far here into our presentation, we will start with an obligatory disclaimer. Uh, a few things we will point out. Number one, neither Adam nor myself are attorneys. If you have any questions about the content in this presentation or any of its legality, please consult one. Uh, number two, nothing in this presentation should be construed as advice. It's just information, right? Uh, number three, you need to make your own moral and ethical decisions with what you're going to get out of this presentation. We're not here to tell you what's right and wrong. That's up to you. And number four is that we tailored this presentation towards the United States based on what we know and the laws we're able to research. So if you're here from another country, make sure you check out what works in your country. We also want to point out that our only real qualification here is curiosity. Uh, Adam and I obviously have real life, personal, professional, and social lives. We also actually have profiles on Facebook and LinkedIn and such. So uh, you know, understand again that, that curiosity is what drove us to, uh, to producing this presentation. So before we get too far, I think the first question and probably one of the more important questions is why be anonymous? What's the, what's the point of doing all of this anyway? And while there are a myriad number of reasons, the simple fact is we believe everyone has the right to privacy. Interestingly, you'll find that uh, most if not all of the quotes that we've used here in our presentation actually come from U.S. Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas, and he was a, quite a privacy advocate. He's got some real zingers of lines here, and this is one of my favorites, right? The right to be let alone is indeed the beginning, or I would say the cornerstone of all freedom. Um, further, we also want to point out and we want to reinforce or, or really drive home the fact that being anonymous does not mean or imply that you are a lawbreaker, and it shouldn't mean or imply that you are a lawbreaker, only that you do indeed want to be let alone. A couple of things to bear in mind. Number one, this is not really for the faint of heart. The process of becoming, until, uh, of becoming anonymous does require intellect, desire, dedication, right? This isn't something you can really do in your spare time or you can halfway commit to. If you want to become anonymous, you want to get rid of your identity, this is pretty much an all or nothing endeavor. Uh, the last thing I want to point out here, uh, those who claim you don't need privacy if you have nothing to hide are exactly the people you need to be hiding from. Yes. <laughs> All right. So next most important question is who is Jack Flack? Everyone hopefully has seen Cloak and Dagger, the kid from E.T., Dabney Coleman, right? Okay. So <clears throat> using that as our meme here, we've got three levels of becoming anonymous. The cloak, the dagger, and then the hermit level. The cloak level we've established is the minimally anonymous level. Your girlfriend, stalker, favorite fans on the internet, not going to be able to find you. 
any three-letter agency, any PI, anyone remotely serious is probably still going to figure out who you are and how to get to you. So at the dagger level, you're stepping it up a bit. You're pretty anonymous. It's going to be a more difficult life. Um, you'll see here that we've outlined <clears throat> potentially legal in yellow. Throughout the slides, we've highlighted certain areas as yellow that if you're not careful, you could be breaking the law. So you need to be walking the line here. Find out the right way to do these things or don't do them at all. Uh, the FBI, however, is still going to find you at the dagger level. So finally, we've got Hermit. Hermit is completely off the grid, potentially completely invisible. Depending on how dedicated and serious you are to this uh, practice of Hermit level, you could hide from just about anyone. So, <clears throat> Jack Flack 101, the basic premises for any of the three levels. First of all, there's going to be some new habits we're going to introduce to you that uh, are going to be difficult, perhaps, from what you're used to in your daily lives, but uh, we believe that over time you'll get more comfortable with them. Uh, one of the other primary rules is that you need to be careful when communicating with others. Uh, what you say and how you talk to them is going to have a big impact. It's important to pay attention to the information that you're communicating to these people and the information they already have. You want to repeat what they know about you. If they know your name, well then you can re-give your name, but don't give anything else out. Um, also look around. As you walk and, and pay attention, look for security cameras, look for police or other agencies, anyone who may be out to identify you. You always want to be able to get yourself out of a situation. If you happen to be near a crime or near, uh, near a situation that can be causing trouble, you want to be able to find an exit and get out so that you are not becoming a part of that scene and becoming identified. Um, part of that means blending in. Don't stand out. Don't wear overly obvious disguises. Don't be overly flashy in your clothes and your appearance. And lastly, this is, a, this is an ongoing process that's going to take over throughout the rest of your life. This is not something that you can do once and then forget about and move on. All right, now again, before we really get into breaking things down into three levels, specifically Cloak, Dagger, and Hermit, there are a few things that, again, you're going to have to do regardless of how anonymous you intend to become. So getting started, essentially, or the early steps towards becoming anonymous. The first thing you're going to have to do is cancel all of, that, uh, all of that information that's coming at you. So whether we're talking about magazines or newspapers or Netflix or Blockbuster, basically any subscription, anything that is associated with the identity you are trying to obfuscate or you're trying to get rid of needs to go away. A big part of this process is also forwarding your mail. Your home address, which is what most people give out when you sign up for forms and you sign up for subscriptions, is something you'll probably not want to continue using. There are a number of ways to do this, and we'll get into a little bit more detail as we go through, bearing in mind that in general we're talking about third parties here. So we're talking about you know, either something along the lines of a mailboxes, et cetera, at the most basic level, or potentially someone who will be receiving mail on your behalf. Uh, we're going to need to expunge any and all legal and credit histories. Bear in mind that some of this information, there, is, you know, there are legal precedents for information going away. Right On your credit history, technically things older than seven years, you can request removal and uh, by law, the individual credit bureaus will remove this information. Newer information you may have, have to contest or fight to have it removed. In some cases, you are at the mercy of the American Gestapo, <clears throat> excuse me, the credit bureaus who hold and or possess this information. So uh, understand that, again, you've, you've only really got so much you can do to expunge this information. Um, also bear in mind that after having done so, you'll probably want to place locks on your credit files in order to prevent new information from accumulating on the identity that you are trying to get rid of. Lastly, we want to shred everything. Now, there are various degrees of security for shredding information. Uh, in essence, our goal here is to say, hey, shred everything on paper. And we would say, in order to truly be secure, you should shred everything with a level three or higher shredder, which is basically going to end up with one eighth inch cross-cut squares of tiny confetti paper, right? We want to ensure that no one's going to be able to take the information that we shred and put it back together after the fact. All right, and as another note, you know, you, you don't just want to shred everything and then dump that in your trash and put it outside your front house. You're going to want to take that, split it up into smaller chunks, and <clears throat> mix in some junk mail with your confidential information, and then throw that out over time so that if anyone is picking up your trash and they try to re reassemble what they get, they're not getting a whole piece of anything. Absolutely. Now, we have to go through the same process online. Question? Uh, the question was, uh, shouldn't you, couldn't you just burn it? The answer is yes, although technically you wouldn't want to burn the information without first shredding it because a burned piece of paper is basically as easy to put back together for at least.